Hey friends, today I'm bearing it all. I'm gonna share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll open cupboards, pull out drawers, and look inside closets in my thrifted kitchen. Before we jump into the deep dark secrets of my thrifted kitchen, I wanted to share with you this beautiful carved wooden LED hummingbird light that was sent to me by the Tavisi company. I will leave a link in the description box below if you're interested in checking out their line of gifts. They are a creative and unique gift supply company and they provide unique items for the home and garden. I'm excited to plug this little hummingbird lamp into the USB port of my computer at school and have it on my desk. I think the kids will really enjoy seeing it. Thanks again to Tavisi for sending me this little lamp. So my daughter Neve requested buffalo chicken dip for, for uh, supper tonight. And as I was gathering my stuff to make it, I pulled out my Pyrex, um, or my corningware actually, in the Spice of Life pattern. And I realized like this and so many other things in my kitchen are thrifted. And my sister Patty did a video in which she shared all of the thrifted items in her kitchen. And I thought it might be fun for you to see my thrifted kitchen because probably I'm gonna guess a good 80 to 85% of the items that I use in my kitchen have been thrifted with the exception of course of appliances and things like that. But dishware and that sort of thing, easily 80% of them have been thrifted. So let's go ahead and take a tour of my thrifted kitchen. Immediately to the right as you enter the kitchen is my coffee area and just about everything in here, actually everything in here with the exception of the coffee maker is pre-loved. You see my little coffee bank that my sister gave me for Christmas. All of those spoons with the exception of one of them which belonged to my wife's grandmother has been thrifted by me my little Japanese stoneware sugar bowl, and that beautiful canister for my sister Kath, uh, Patty. I love that color. Over here is my mug tree with all of my Japanese stoneware mugs that I collect one at a time. I am a huge fan of Japanese stoneware. I love it. And those beautiful butterscotch handled knives were a gift from my mom. And then sitting on top of my coffee maker is a stack of little butter pats. I use them as spoon rests in the morning for my uh, coffee spoon that I stir with. And they are The Friendly Village by Johnson Brothers, one of my all-time favorite dishware patterns. And there you can see the back stamp. And the little plates represent each of the seasons. I think that's spring, that may be fall or summer, and there is winter. Um, I absolutely love those, and those were a Facebook Marketplace find. So there's my little coffee area. As we move to the other side of the refrigerator, there is an area that we keep the espresso maker and the toaster. The espresso maker we lovingly called Betty White, and she was a gift for my daughter a few years ago. The kids love those coffee drinks and special espresso drinks, and this was really a fun gift. But other than the toaster and Betty White, most things in this area are pre-loved. Here is a beautiful tin that's on top of the espresso maker sitting in a little wooden plate. Both of those things are pre-loved, and I really honestly have never met a tin I didn't like. I love decorated tins, and in there we keep the accessories for the, the espresso maker. Over by the toaster is my Wexford butter dish that I found at the thrift store, and yes, I do keep my butter out year-round. My mother does, and my grandmother did, and we've never had any issues whatsoever, so I like soft, easily spreadable butter, so I keep my butter dish out and that is sitting on top of just a uh, cutting board. Over to the right of the espresso maker there's an assortment of accessories. There's uh, a tin of tea, there's a ball jar with some coffee grounds in it for the espresso maker and some chopsticks, wooden utensils and these beautiful 
cracker and cheese serving trays that have a great mid-century vibe to them. Here's a closer look at that little English tea tin. I actually purchased that tin with tea in it and I love it and I'm thinking that I'm it's reminding me of spring and Easter and I'm going to need to start doing some <laughs> decorating soon because some of the colors on my counter could be updated to some spring colors and let me give you a closer look at these beautiful mid-century cheese and cracker serving trays. Both of these were found at a thrift store and I was just drawn to that mid-century vibe. I love blue and green together so of course I had to grab this and I think it was $2.99. It was not expensive at all. And look at that gorgeous geometric design, just beautiful. And then behind that is this wooden Spice of Life patterned cheese and cracker tray. I do have a glass dome that fits on top of that. I just love both of those things. Now, I'm showing this step stool because I'm short and I need to climb up on it to show you what's inside the cupboards above the espresso station. And this step stool was also a pre-loved item and it reminded me so much of one my grandmother had that I could not leave it behind. Now I am going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So don't judge my cupboards or my need to collect glassware. So here's a look at some of the glassware that I have collected almost all of this with the exception I think of the Tervis tumblers is pre-loved and found at the thrift store. On the top shelf are these gorgeous blue etched goblets. These are beautiful on an Easter table. I just love those. And this is some Indiana glass in that optic or cubist pattern. We have uh, water beverage glasses as well as the smaller juice glasses and they add a real sparkle to any table just the light hitting those cubist type facets is really lovely. I also have them in amber glass I found these at a thrift store and these are beautiful in the fall and I have them in the sherbet dishes and I found those sherbet dishes at various thrift stores one at a time and I've just collected a set. I think I have a set of five so I need one more to fit our family. And then all of these beautiful wine glasses were found in usually in pairs of two or sometimes three. Often you get an odd number at a thrift store because they're donated, someone's broken one so they donate them but I don't mind and I don't mind mixing and matching, but those are beautiful lead crystal wine glasses and then these beautiful pedestal glasses in the front are so heavy, really gorgeous. They kind of remind me of a French cafe, just the quality and the heaviness of them. That's a single wine glass from a set that I think the others have since broken, but here are some beautiful green glasses these avocado green glasses are gorgeous in so many seasons, spring, summer, even at Christmas time and in the fall, just lovely. And you can see um, that I'm not lying when I say I do not need any glassware, but I just honestly can't help myself sometimes. My dad had the same affinity for glassware, so I come by it naturally. These are all of our Tervis tumblers. They have the kids' initials on them. When they were younger, in an attempt to prevent them from using 100 glasses a day, we bought them each a tumbler with their initial, and that's the glass that they used for the day. And in the South, Tervises are a necessity because they don't uh, sweat in the heat. They're, they're double-lined, and so they don't make marks on your furniture. But all of these little juice glasses and cocktail glasses and smaller glasses have all also been thrifted. And there are occasions on which I use each of them, so that's how I justify my <laughs> huge and ever-growing collection of glassware.
as we move out from the espresso station and around the corner we have my pantry and um, I usually keep an apron hanging on the pantry door and so here's what I have now I had a more wintry looking one and just the other day I thought you know what it's getting nice I think I'll put up my springy apron and then that reminded me that I probably uh, should do a spring home tour once I get all of my spring touches in my house I will do a spring home tour but here is a look at the back wall of the kitchen this is where the cooktop and the oven is located and again most of the items that you see displayed on my countertop are pre-loved I've found them at thrift stores or antique stores or they've been gifts from family members the first thing I want to share with you is this adorable little spice drawer set. This was a gift from my mom. She purchased this at an estate sale when she was up in Vermont visiting my sisters and wrapped it all up in her clothing to protect it, put it in her suitcase, and brought it down to me. And I love it. It's so cute. And the little drawers pull out and they're like little shakers. That's a piece of teacher tacky tape on there to keep that drawer in. I think mom put that there when she was uh, flying it down. So here's a close-up and you can see it has six little drawers with different spices labeled on them and I just think it is precious. And on top of my counter I always keep uh, a cutting board and a cookbook and those two items happen to be new However, these Moscow Mule mugs were thrifted. I love putting a touch of copper in my kitchen. I think it warms the space up and I love the way the light reflects off of it. Those mugs are sitting on top of my Nora Fleming plate and I've talked about Nora Fleming in other videos. That was a gift from my mom. She makes this beautiful uh, ceramics and you can switch out the little charms and that tiny mason jar you see there is one of the Nora Fleming charms. You can switch them out seasonally. I'll leave a link in the description box for those. And then over here I have my glass jar full of cookie cutters. I don't believe that I have purchased any of those cookie cutters. They were all given to me or handed down to me by my mom and grandmother or I found them at thrift stores. And I just love the way they look in that jar. It's just so homey to me. Then of course we have our dog treats and then I have my utensil canister full of various utensils all of which I use and all of which I believe were found at the thrift store. I don't think I purchased any of those things new and I do use each and every one of those the potato masher, the rolling pin, the wooden spoons, all of those things. I am on the hunt for a different utensil caddy. I really want to find a wide mouth stoneware jar to put them in or a stoneware crock really. I think that would look so lovely. So here's a last look at the countertop before we get to the, uh, as I promised you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, here's the ugly. <laughs> I'm going to open up my drawers so no judgment. There's my collection of thrifted rolling pins. And then it's just sort of a, a combination of, you know, thrifted items and new items in there. The dirty little secrets of our utensil drawers. And here underneath, in these cupboards, I have, um, again, a mix of new and thrifted items. The glass bowls and that beautiful little um, bowl with the apple on it were all purchased at a thrift store. My sister Patty talks about the fact that she never leaves those glass Pyrex bowls behind at thrift stores and I have to agree with her. They are so useful and mine were all thrifted. The plastic bowls or the Rubbermaid bowls I've had for years. I love them because they have a gripper on the bottom so they don't move around on your countertop. Now moving down to the second shelf. Again, a mix of new and thrifted items. My thrifted Tupperware vegetable containers are in the back. And then the glass 
where um, brownie pans were thrifted with the exception of that jadeite one. I have had that since I was in my early 20s. And in the back I have some more Pyrex and some actually handmade pottery that was a gift from a friend of mine. So there's a look inside my cupboards. Now we will move on to the upper cupboards. Again, please don't judge. But here uh, is where I keep the bowls that we use on a regular basis. I believe almost all of those bowls were thrifted. On the second shelf, I have my tea pots and my tea items. Again, all pre-loved. That little glass juicer is pre-loved. And then moving up to the third shelf, I'll back up so you can see that the third and fourth shelves, I have a whole assortment of items, all of which I have thrifted. So I think I'll give you a closer look, but I'm going to have to get up on my ladder. Here's a good look at the items that I've thrifted. All of those teapots were found secondhand. You saw that cream and sugar in a recent haul. And then on the next shelf, I have some corning ware that I've thrifted. That basket contains my Nora Fleming charms, and if I remember to, I'll insert a picture of those. And then again, just some teacups, cream and sugar collection, and that beautiful uh, milk glass planter is a new find. And I'm hoping to put a uh, shamrock plant in there for St. Patrick's Day. In the other upper cupboard, I keep our everyday dishware. So these are the dishes that we grab for on a regular basis. On the bottom shelf, I have my Japanese stoneware and some Corel that we use regularly. The second shelf is my Mikasa French country dinnerware. My sister Patty has the same pattern. This whole set was a Facebook Marketplace find, and I, I don't know what I paid for it, but it was very reasonable, maybe $60, $65, something like that. It's such a useful dinnerware, and this is kind of our formal everyday wear. So if I want to set a nice table, I'll use this French country pattern. You can see it's a creamy white. It really goes with everything, and I have a complete set of it. On this shelf, on the bottom shelf, I keep my Japanese stoneware plates and some Corel butterfly gold plates. I used to put paper plates down here and the kids used them like crazy and I thought gosh that's so wasteful and they're really expensive. So I replaced my paper plates with the butterfly gold corningware. They're really thin so it kind of fools you into thinking that it's a paper plate and the kids didn't seem to notice. Here's a close-up of that butterfly gold pattern. And then here are the Japanese stoneware plates that we use on a daily basis. They are so sturdy and they're great for everyday use. They hold up so well. Moving up to the top shelf in this cupboard, I just have sort of an array of extra items. Salt and pepper shakers, vases, some seasonal decor, and so forth. And then here is an overview of the whole counter. That is my Courier and Ives spring tray. I switch those out seasonally and uh, keep one on my stovetop at all times. I love them. They were a Facebook Marketplace find. This beautiful ironstone plate um, is on display. That is a Facebook, no, I'm sorry, that's a thrift store find. As is this little matches container and I just keep my measuring spoons in there. My little uh, Ceramic rooster is a new find. And then these salt and pepper shakers, one belonged to um, Truy's grandfather, this, this one right here. I broke the other one of those, but they are fabulous. They have a top, and then this one I found at a thrift store, and they really keep the moisture out. He had them at his beach house um, because they seal out the moisture. Here's another little piece of jadeite. I keep my garlic in that. I found that for a dollar or two at a yard sale. And then here's that beautiful ironstone plate with the floral pattern on it. I love that. And then lastly, I wanted to share with you these two gorgeous dish towels. These were a gift from my sister, Patty, and I love blue and white, and she knows it. I am currently on the hunt for some blue and white planters for some houseplants that I have. 
And then here's the other side of the kitchen, the sink area, looking out into the dining and living room. This huge basket was a thrift store find, and let me just tell you, it holds a bunch of junk. We keep our papers and our mail and then some odds and ends that we're not sure what to do with at the moment get stuck in there. As you can see, there's an old clock in my um, tripod and it just hides a multitude of sins. My paper towel holder is not thrifted. It is new. I got that from Amazon and I'll link it if I can. It is so cute. I got one for my mom for Christmas this past year. That little trivet is thrifted as is the glass cake plate. And um, the little bud vase that the roses are in was something that I thrifted for 50 cents or so. I think it actually might have been an inkwell. I'm not sure. So there you have this side of the kitchen. Now you're getting a good look at my junk. <laughs> And then over here, that beautiful picture and the spice rack was also um, were also thrifted. I love those beautiful colors. And here is a final look at my thrifted kitchen. This is looking out toward the dining area. And as you can see, so much of what I use in my kitchen and in my everyday has been pre-loved. It really makes me happy to know that I can take items that have been donated or sent to the thrift shop and give them new life. I can save them from the landfills and I can bring them into my own home. And so often the quality of older items is so much better than anything that you can get today, especially for that price. I want to thank you for joining me today for a tour of my thrifted kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments. Would you like to see more? I also invite you to hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already. Give the video a thumbs up and share it with any of your friends who you think might enjoy this type of content. All right, everyone, take care. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.